Hello and welcome back to Internal Rambles. This is your girl Rochelle and we are back for another reality recap episode continuing to review and recap Ready to Love Season 9 and they are in Fort Worth, Texas. We are actually recapping two episodes, episode 5 and episode 6 episode five they did not reveal who was being sent home so I decided that I was not going to just do a single recap that I would go ahead and do a double recap when they are actually telling us who is going to be sent home at the end of the episode so thank you for tuning in if you are new welcome and if you're returning thank you for coming back and listening to what I got to say about these reality shows, let's get straight into it. Episode 5 of Ready to Love Season 9. This episode was called Pajama Jam. And the men are in power. So that means that one woman is going to be sent home. Alrighty, so let's get into this recap of episode 5, Pajama Jam. Alrighty, so at the top of the episode, Nephew Tommy meets with the fellas at the men's lounge and tells them that he is going to have a pajama party for the singles and that he wants them to focus on intimacy and chemistry but that he don't want nobody showing up in their draws <laughs> so have on your finest pajamas but don't be out here with your uh, with your draws on okay so that is basically one of the main things that happens is the pajama jam the pajama party but before we get to the pajama party there are a few dates that occur so the first date that happens is with dominique and alexis they go on something called they go to something called a stretch bar i didn't really understand this it just looked like something like maybe a chiropractor would do or similar to a massage but nothing really got massaged like literally it was just someone stretching them out i was like okay sure nonetheless they start talking and they discuss that alexa shares that she is ready for a long relationship seems like dominique is wanting the same thing and Alexis makes the comment that, you know, you remind me of my father. He was very action based. He didn't talk a lot, but when he talked, everybody listened. And, you know, I was thinking when I was watching this, but definitely when I, I have to watch these episodes back and, and make notes to make sure I didn't miss anything. And I'm usually missing something, but okay, anyways. <laughs> uh,. Where has Dominique been? Because I feel like there's an episode or two where we didn't really see him a lot. So it's kind of interesting that she's talking to him and it seems like they're connecting. But I'm like, did they connect off the screen? Because where he been at? That's really like what when they were on the date, I was kind of distracted because I was just like, where he been? so anyway they seem kind of cool like they were vibing a bit nothing really too great to discuss but okay that was their date Jal Vanessa and Laron go on a paddle boating date and Laron is just there's not much athleticism to him Vanessa got a bit of a athleticism Laron could not stay on that. He was struggling to stay on top of that paddle boat. His balance was uh, not there. He was. It looked like he was scared to even stand up on the paddle board. <laughs> Meanwhile, Vanessa was smooth. It looked like she does this every other day. And she probably was looking at him like, Laron, get up. Like, stand up. 
<laughs> Look how I do it and do the same thing. But nonetheless, he did eventually get up on the paddleboard. Child, Laurent is a character, okay? So, Laurent, uh, and they get done with the paddleboarding date, and Vanessa brings up the fact that some of the women have said that he is a party boy and that he likes to go out, etc. And then he's like, oh, what? A party boy? I don't know where where this narrative is coming from and it's like the narrative is coming from you literally your first day at the mixer you told the women that you like to go out Wednesday through Sunday so it's not something that anyone has been assumptive about it's not something that anyone has made a false rumor that literally was coming from the horse's mouth your mouth so the fact that he's now all sensitive, oh, where's this party boy thing coming from? And he's like, well, I work from home and I go out just so I can have a bit of socialization. And it's like, listen, there's various ways to have socialization. And it's not necessarily go and getting low to the flow at the club Wednesday through Sunday. <laughs> you go out because you like going out and you like to party and you like to sip on a little shop. Let's call the spade a spade. Okay? Okay. So Vanessa, she says in her diary that she doesn't really think most likely that Laurent is probably her type because of his ways. Okay? Okay. Now we are finally at the pajama party. And it starts off with Jonathan talking to Alexis. And he's like, you know, I really like you. I'm laying claim to you. He didn't say that part, but he's like, I like you. I think you're beautiful. We vibe well. I like your personality. I just want to let you know that I like you. She's like, oh, really? Oh, man. Okay. And she's like, you know, I want to get to know you better. You seem very laid back. And he's like, he's like, yeah, you know, I am laid back, but I can get a little wild. <laughs> Boy, he, he showed a little bit of that wild side later in the episode. More on that a little bit later. <laughs> then Dominique goes off and talks to Mika. And he's like, you know, I've really been wanting to get to know you a bit better. So every time Mika talks to a, uh, a man, it seems like one of her first three questions is, you got kids? Do you want kids? You want any more? Which I can understand because... She does mention at some point that she makes it a point very early on when she's meeting or, or talking to a man to let them know, hey, I have children and I don't want no more. So Dominique shares that he really wants children. That's really a goal of his. And she shares that, you know, that's not a plan for her. She has her two and that's really all that she needs. So Dominique shares that he really likes Dominique or Dominique shares that he really likes Mika, but that he's not sure if there's anything romantically there, especially because they're not aligned on the children aspect. Laurent shares that he feels as though Koshia has fallen back from him, that initially that was his main or top connection but that she hasn't really been communicating with him and at the pajama party she's been smiling at men engaging making plates for guys and hasn't really been putting a lot of energy into him and so she's not he's not sure what's going on but he feels like there is something going on with Ko Shia then will goes around he starts interrogating the women because he wants to know who's been saying that he sleep on the flow which was stated in the previous episode so ultimately he starts talking to patrice and she's like yeah because it pretty much did sound like you was about to sleep on the floor when i talked to you and he was like okay so this is the one who told alexis that so they start going back and forth and she's like, he's like, I don't sleep on the floor. What are you talking about? I got some money. I ain't no reason for me to be sleeping. He don't talk like this, but okay. Ain't no reason for me to sleep on the floor. And she's like, listen, I just said 
what I just made a conclusion based off the information that you gave me. So I don't know. Will say he don't sleep on the flow. Patrice say I'm just saying what he had done told me. So that's that. Um, Justin and Mika started talking, and basically, of course, Mika gonna bring up kids. So Justin gives his little statement I want kids but if I don't have kids I'll be okay and so Mika's like yes finally a man that is okay with not having kids is what I need what I want in my life child just a lion he want kids and I don't think he's truly at the point where he's okay with not having kids just saying and that shows up a little bit later in either this episode or the next and I'll get on uh, into that a little bit later. So then Laurent circles back or goes and finally talks to Koshia. And he tells her, listen, something's off. You're not talking to me. You keep in, in other men faces. You not. It seems like you're not feeling me. Like, what's up? What's happening? Hmm? You smiling other men faces. Why you not smiling in my face? Where my hug at, sir? <laughs> he don't say that. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I have backed off a bit. I feel like I need to let you go through this process. She doesn't really say, or she doesn't say at all why she's backed off. She has confirmed that she has kind of let up off of him, but she don't say why. So then he gets upset and he's like, you, you out here smiling in other men faces. What about me though? I thought I was your number one. And so he just keeps going on and on. And she was like, well, I mean, you know, I'm letting you do you a bit. Like we supposed to be dating other folks too. So then Maya comes over and she, they're all sitting there. It's Maya, Chaz, Koshia, and uh, Laron ultimately at a table and Maya's like oh Laron you tried to play me but it's okay you know you be partying and stuff you know and he gets up and he starts hugging her now him and Koshi are having a bit of a heated discussion or you know there's a little bit of you know something to iron out and he glides off to Maya and starts he basically does to her what he accuses Koshia of and it's like um if you don't want her smiling and doing stuff in men's faces why are you off uh hugging on and kiki and in Maya's face it's like chill. so then he finally comes back and goes back into oh yeah but you but what you was doing you've been kiki and in men's faces <laughs> and it's like she was like weren't you just smiling all up and hugging up on Maya like please don't come to me with that and so she starts crying he's like no no but you I thought I was your number one you done change I don't so he starts going in on her again clearly by the way also he's a bit inebriated he been sipping on a little shum shum so Koshia starts crying and Chaz is like yo like he looking at Laron like you all right so Laron gets up and he's like, you know what? Never mind. I'm done. Whatever. So Chaz is like, yo, talk to her. Like, talk it through with her. He pulls Chaz aside. Uh, uh, Chaz pulls Laron aside and is like, yo, like, she's upset. Talk to her. You're not listening to what she's saying. Like, we're here to, to make meaningful relationships meaningful connections but also the things we may have done in the past we're trying to do better nah man i, I ain't listening to it. this is Laurent. i'm gonna listen to her bs uh, if she crying okay you know but she and men faces and i'm not dealing with that you know basically he let his ego and immaturity rule and reign supreme and he did not go back and talk to her you know and I think Koshia could have communicated a bit more effectively in, okay, you're letting him go through the process. Okay, 
but what was the reason that you fell back like did something happen did he rub you the wrong way like every episode she's having an issue with somebody sometimes balance sometimes it's like i don't know what's going on so but also i do fault Lauren in this a lot too because why are you flying off the handle why aren't you communicating why aren't you you didn't handle that situation very well and then you're accusing you're doing the same thing that you're accusing her of and you're upset but then you go and do the same thing that you say you don't want that you you're upset about her doing it's like what excuse me say what so you know it's okay if you do it but it's not okay if she do it oh okay I'm not a fan of Lauren. I don't think he's ready to love, but that's that's neither here nor there at this point. <laughs> Cause a woman's going home. The men are in power. So the singles they play a game called Truth and Sexy. Truth or sexy. I don't know. It's basically truth or dare. And so somebody so it was Patrice's turn. She chose Truth, I believe. And so she was asked who was the sexiest guy and she said Chaz and I was like you know what Patrice when you're right you're right (laughs) yes Chaz is the best looking guy so um it was Jonathan's turn and he was give he chose sexy so his task was to whisper sweet nothings in his strongest connection but by then I think Jonathan had had a um a lot of um liquid courage he had had a lot about it about it juice <laughs> but at time because he took it way too much he goes over to alexis pretty much picks her up and makes her sit on his lap and then was all in her neck and she said she felt uncomfortable and it was a little uncomfortable to look at a i think even though they like each other they still it's still so early on like she didn't want to sit on his lap and definitely not in a huge group of people probably not on tv i don't think that they are vibing that much like that yet and it was just it was just a little uncomfortable like no bro she don't want to be on your lap like that so it was team too much jonathan like simmer down but I guess that was that wild side he said that he had. That was that liquid courage. You doing too much side. Alrighty. So we're finally at the men deliberating who they are not feeling. The bottom two were Koshia and Mika. With Mika, they feel like she gives homey vibes and that she basically has a wall up ultimately um they see her more as a friend and then koshia they some of them feel like they don't share the same values as her and that some of the communications with her have not sat with them well and like i said in this episode five it was not revealed who was sent home so it was not revealed until the beginning of episode six so i am going to stop here not stop but i'm going to get into episode six and then i'll reveal or not reveal (laughs) i'll discuss my overall thoughts of the two episodes at the end but let's get into episode six that's the end of episode five let's talk about who got ultimately got sent home okay okay all righty y'all so let's get into this episode six recap this episode was titled closed mouths don't get fed okay and as i mentioned they did not reveal who was sent home in episode five so that gets revealed at the beginning of this episode so like i said the top 
or the top the bottom two were Mika they felt homey vibes with her and they saw her more as a friend Koshia they weren't vibing with her not same values didn't appreciate some of the conversations that they had with Koshia ultimately the men sent Koshia home was I surprised about this um I thought honestly it it could have went either way I think that a lot of the men want children and I thought that may have played a huge part in Mika getting sent home because shared values or shared goals if you if one partner wants to have children and the other doesn't why we ain't getting in a relationship right okay but with Koshia I just think some of the men were getting into it with each other or we're getting into it with her or I think that some of the things that she was saying just wasn't vibing with them she's a very strong personality and she can be I mentioned that she's a firecracker she's temperamental they just weren't connecting with her so I wasn't surprised that Koshia was sent home so that's that Now that we are in episode six, the women are back in power, which means a man is going home. Nephew Tommy tells the women that they want, or well, all of them, that he wants them to explore their non-negotiable. So that is the, the task from nephew Tommy, explore your non-negotiables with each other. So... The first date is with Rashina and Justin. Their initial date was pretty good, according to them. They walked their dogs. They had, um, I don't know, they had like a lunch or just like, had. um, they did something. They had some food or something outdoors with each other. So they this time went on a date and got some salsa lessons. That was kind of cute. Um, Justin was like, oh, Lord, not no dance lessons. (laughs) So for Rashina, her non-negotiable is someone who does not have effective communication. She believes communication is key. And Justin said that he has no problem with communication. He has no problem with expressing his feelings. So they seem to still be really liking each other. Rashina, she is uh her top connection i believe is chaz don't quote me on that i think it's true though but she's still she's liking justin too so we'll see what happens with these two the next date was with alexis and chaz they go out to a what seems like a bar or a lounge and chaz says that he's been wanting to go on a solo date with alexis ever since the first time that he saw her and so uh, uh, Chaz's non-negotiable is cheating he does not want nobody freaking and sneaking on the side behind his back and Alexis agreed she said that she um, loyalty is very important to her and so just in them talking they said that they have a lot of shared values and that they also believe in that there's that there may be something there in between them that there may be a connection just in their conversation finally having a solo date with each other and so Chaz was like you know <laughs> I'll you know you you may he said something I don't know what he said but like you know I want you to know you know you the one for me or something like that and I'm like Chaz you got a few connections now don't be <laughs> don't be giving nobody no false hopes but nonetheless Alexis says that she had wanted to kiss Chaz but he did not kiss her and so in his diary thing he was like listen I got a few connections I can't be kissing everybody and I'm like yes that's one of the things with these dating shows particularly the bachelor skis me out side note 
they be kissing like joey they all be kissing joey i'm like is mono not a thing no more y'all just be kissing kissing back i mean jane will kiss joey and then sarah and then sally and then Susie. i'm like y'all all kissing behind each other that is just so i get the heebie-jeebies when i be seeing <laughs> oh my gosh okay side note so i'm like yes Chaz, don't be kissing on everybody please and i thank you okay so internal rambles okay uh there was a bit of a group date with patrice vanessa alonso and william vanessa said that she felt as though she was just kind of a spectator just watching the date because the guys seem to be really into patrice um i don't i didn't hear patrice say what her non-negotiable was but for Vanessa it was communication William had like 15 no it wasn't 15 but he said you know I need a woman with a warm spirit you know and also you gotta be able to work out because I work out all the time if you don't work out you can't be with me and then also you gotta be you know you gotta be able to understand my responsibility as a parent which I get that but it, I just found it funny as though uh, Alonzo wouldn't even identify a, a non-negotiable. William had about five. Vanessa gave one. I don't remember. Patrice may have said one. It just wasn't shown on the show. But um, I thought that. I will say Alonzo not giving one. If he didn't, if he gave one, they didn't show it. Alonzo just seems just so like he just going with the flow. Like, do you got a connection? I think I, well, I will say it seems like he does stuff off camera. Like he'll go, he'll be very attentive off camera, but, and then we'll hear about it. But it's like, you're on a TV show and I get like, it can be a bit daunting, but it's just really weird. He doesn't seem to put he puts in it seems like he'll put in effort off the camera but it's just I don't know anyways let me uh, that's an aside so William tells Vanessa that hey I was trying to after our date I tried to contact you contact you you not you never responded back and she was like what number do you have the man had the wrong number and so he someone was like well did you give the wrong number purposely and she didn't say i don't think she did i think he just had the wrong number <laughs> i was like Chill. the i think this might be let me see my notes the last date nope there's a, there's a few more sorry mika goes out with dominique and they discuss their non-negotiables and he says he needs a woman that can cook he says that he can cook but he also wants a woman that can cook too and he also wants a woman that is able to compromise and that he wants children he doesn't have children he wants children and that that would be an issue for him if the woman is not wanting children and so Mika's like well you know where I stand and so he kind of explored that a little bit more with Mika. And he's and she said, well, you know, I haven't met a man where I was so in love with him that I wanted to have more kids. But you never know. And so Dominique took that as an opening where, well, you know, it could be a possibility. I don't really think she said that. I think she's meaning like she's never that's never happened, probably because she doesn't believe that that would have it happen that there's that type of love she's pretty set on the two kids that she has so <laughs> like he wants he want I mean I don't know how much he's really into Mika but I just think he wants a glimmer of hope that she will change her mind okay the last date for real this time <laughs> was with Rashina Will and Jonathan they go on a date to make some body butters I think that's kind of a cool date and Rashina says that lying is a 
deal breaker for her that trust is a very is very important to her and that will says that faith is very important to him that he wants someone that loves the lord jonathan wasn't really trying to give up a non-negotiable ultimately he gave up smoking he doesn't want someone that smokes cigarettes but Rashina felt as though that was very surface, a surface level response. Ultimately, Jonathan ended up leaving and Will stayed around and Rashina felt as though he was interrogating her with a lot of questions kind of back to back to back. So Rashina's not really feeling well. <laughs> Let's get into the ladies' lounge where, again, there's a little bit of a confrontation. It be going down in the ladies' lounge, okay? So, Patrice shares that Will confronts her about saying that he sleeps on the floor. And he was, and she's like, because Alexis told, her, told him that. And Alexis is like, I did not give a name. I did say... That some women, you know, that there's some women that have been saying some things, particularly that they were concerned that you sleep on the floor, but that she did not identify a name. And so Patrice was like, well, how would he know that? How would he know it was me, etc." But, you know, when watching the show, he said he did not know that he questioned each woman and whoever gave the reaction would be the one who said it. And Patrice was the one who gave the reaction he never said well Alexis told me it was Patrice so we have to I mean I'm gonna go off of that because I don't know any other way so Patrice and Alexis are going back and forth and ultimately Tommy is like listen everyone's experience is different from the, everyone else's and that we just have to you know understand that Everyone is on their own journey. I don't even know what that meant, but it stopped the arguing. <laughs> so then nephew Tommy says, I got a curveball. I haven't had one yet. I got a new one. I got one for you. One man is not going home. Two men. So you guys have to come together and identify two men that are going to be sent home. So the bottom three were Will Jonathan and William will they feel that as though he's has a he's had a lot of off-putting conversations he's too aggressive Jonathan they feel as though he is not open he has a wall up and that Alexis was uncomfortable with the pajama jam where he pulled her up on him etc and with William they get friend vibes that he's really not trying to connect with them romantically. And some of them are concerned about his non-negotiables, particularly him so focused on fitness. And that's such a, a deal breaker for him. Ultimately, Will and Jonathan were the ones that were sent home and they both took it well. Alexis was the one that gave the news to Jonathan and they had a bit of a connection and even though he did he was inappropriate at the pajama jam he did apologize pre uh, afterwards before the um before um she told him that he was not ready to love so it does seem like there was some a bit of a connection there prior to that incident and he said he was going to start you know working on himself and and so that was you know a positive thing to say he was none of uh, will or jonathan didn't take it inappropriately or do anything inappropriately so that is that so out of the two episodes koshia will and jonathan were sent home i really honestly felt as though dominique would get sent home I don't really feel he had, I'm like, who is his connection? Who he got a connection with? But I guess, you know, connection versus who has been rubbing people the wrong way and or 
seem to have a wall up and not connecting. I guess that's what maybe the the deciding factors were. Here are my thoughts. <laughs> I think I missed a date. Did I talk about Justin and Maya? Oh, I didn't. They did have a date in the set in episode six. They. Um, Maya's deal breaker was that she wants someone that's family oriented and Justin, you know, he wants, he wants to have kids. And that's, that's what I, I'm glad that I brought that up because that's, here's my thought. Justin has been saying that, you know, he, his thought has changed, but because I think the truth is coming out, he has gone from. I don't have kids. I want kids. But if I don't have kids, that's okay to him just saying, I want children. And I think ultimately he wants children. I think that there's a part, there's like a rational, I don't know if it's like a rational part part of him or like a, I don't know. That's like, Hey, it may not happen. Or if he feels like it's okay, like it it sounds good to say that man wants children. And I think that that is a dangerous, not to be dramatic. I think that be intentional because when you go in and say, but you know, if I don't really, if I don't have, this is what happens when sometimes when this happens, when you, when someone that really wants children gets married but they go in the marriage saying but if I don't have kids it's okay they get in that marriage and they be like man I really want them kids though but man I sure want to be a parent and they're with someone who don't want children but man when I'm gonna have them kids though and then that's how people get divorced because they be like you know what I really do want them kids though I know I had done said but if I don't, I'm going I'm to be all right. But you know what? That ain't the truth. I need, I want, I really want to be a parent. So I think he needs to say what he means and mean what he says. I His statement has changed. <laughs> Justin, if you want to have kids, have kids. I mean, or, you know, be intentional about that. If you're okay, if you really truly feel as though, if you've really truly made peace with that that if it doesn't happen you're okay okay but your answer has been fluctuating so to me that doesn't really sound like you've made peace like don't don't settle for what you don't want and end up being in a divorce because of it you know what I'm saying so that's that um Dominique, who is your connection? Cause I don't where you where were you at and who's your connection? Cause I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh Mika, I feel as though who is her connection? I don't know who she connected to. I I think she gonna be the next one they gonna say I know she was at the bottom, but that she has a wall up. She's she has a rigidity about her that's not gonna do well in this type of a show so I I mean I like Mika but it's just you have to be open-minded and the walls have to come down and it's a lot that you have to be flexible with and open to to really build a connection with someone Chaz is 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 the you know he the number one guy he got most the the ladies love Chaz okay <laughs> and I understand it he really seems like a genuine guy though I like him with Vanessa and I you know I, I wouldn't be mad with him with Rashina. not with Alexis I liked her but she is a bit of a troublemaker I think she just doesn't understand boundaries and filter and you don't have to stir the pot all the time I don't know and I, I I don't know if it's immaturity I don't know what it is with Alexis but she be doing a lot for no reason like girl just find you a man 
<laughs> no, no. And do I have any other thoughts? Justin is cool. I think Justin could have a connection with somebody. I'm just not sure who, but he better get honest with what he truly wants. Um, William, I don't know. William, I could take it. I could take him or leave him. Honestly, I think he he has a rigidity about him too. I'm not surprised about Jonathan and Will being sent home. They've got some growth to do. Some growth. What a f. <laughs> And I think that's it. That's that's my thoughts on these two episodes. Of, I mean, very interesting. Uh, Tommy, I think it was in episode six. If it wasn't, it was in episode five. These are my notes here, rustling. Uh, he mentioned that they were at the halfway point. So in the next episode, the singles are meeting the friends so you know, sometimes that can, it can go down when the, when people meet the friends and the family, and the, so we'll see what happens. I you know I don't think there's any stand out like oh yeah that's they the ones that's the connection to look out for, but I think Chaz is gonna end up with somebody. That's the only one that I really feel like it's it's not if it's just like who who he, who he gonna end up with. <laughs> so that's that thank you for tuning in if you have not listened to my previous recaps please do so you can get all of my content at my official site internal rambles podcast.com over on youtube like comment and subscribe i appreciate all you all of you take care of yourselves and until next episode next and until next recap This is your girl, Rochelle.